So I've been given a challenge and I'm picking up the gauntlet. My challenge is to make three items using one stencil. And today is the first of the three challenges that I'll be doing. The stencil I've chosen is um, from a mesh adhesive stencil pack and it is um, a little fox. I chose this fox because it is my grandnephew's kind of his symbol. He's got a lot of, lot of little foxes in his room and in his crib sheets and things like that. And I thought, I'll dedicate these things to him. So the mesh stencils, um, which are the stencils that I suggest you use, um, in this case, they come from Amy Howard. Um, mesh stencils are the best. They have an adhesive back they're flexible. The mesh will ensure that the cutouts that are inside, um, if you had words written, it might be the circle inside of the O, or in this case, the fox. He's got his little eyelids closed. He's got the insides of his ears and things like that. Details that you want to try and keep in while they're held in place because of the way they made this mesh stencil. So, They've used um, an organza or a, a silk screen weave. I'm not sure which one it is um, in this case. And they can have great detail. And I'm gonna be cutting this out. And while I do, I'll just kind of explain what's going on. Um, what you wanna do is push the paint through the mesh so that you'll have the design and be able to use the mesh stencil again and again by cleaning off the silk screen. So here I've cut out my little fox. Um, I've got my, uh, what I'm gonna do is apply it to and create a little smock like the one that I have on so that while he's cooking or while he's doing artwork this can get messy the front of him stays clean but he's got his little animal spirit with him so i'm going to go ahead and put this out now the package that i got these i got these from a store a big crafting store there are about five of them in the package and they're not very expensive they're all cotton you don't have to pre-wash um, and so the fabric's stiff, but I don't feel any kind of um, anything that was put on top that would prohibit me from just putting my little fox on here and, and getting to go. I'm going to try and find the middle. So I'm going to bring it a little closer towards me. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to put it on the bib side and put him in the middle. Now, today, press it down really firm. I'm not going to worry about the leaves, but I wanted to keep them on there because I'm going to be using them on my other two projects that I'm doing using this little fox. And so I'm going to just tape these off right now so that any paint that I get on there, any ink that I get on, the, on there is not going to be pushed through and come out on the sides. I can almost got the whole thing. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple today. I'm going to be using um, or just mixing a colors of gray and black together. And I'm not going to make them really precise on here. So what I'm using is going to be um, a, a plastic spreader, which will help me push the ink through. And uh, then I'm going to be using the um can't i can't read this it's black on black i think it's can't not couldn't or something like that and this color is called hold your horses so basically it's a black and a gray um, i'm going to mix these together and press them on for my little fox i want to make sure that i am pretty secure on here i want all these wonderful details to show up. So I think that's most important to make sure that this is adhering to the apron front. Now with these 
these uh, gel art ink tints. I'm going to just lay it out on the small lip. I dry kind of fast. I want to put my lid on and just add a little gray. It may look mottled. It may look a little gray here, a little black here, or you know, a dark gray. That's okay. With my little fox, I'm okay with how he looks. I'm gonna put those here. And I'm gonna hold my spreader ink side down, pressing at a 45 degree angle and kind of pushing it into the mesh. So it doesn't take a lot of ink, but it does take somewhat of a controlled hand to push it on and get it through the mesh. Super cute fox. I'm so happy I, I found this as part of a pack that I got from an order. There were a number of stencils with it. They were all folk art stencils, so he is perfect. Okay, and you can see this is going on super quick. Super quick, super easy. This is my kind of project. can see I'm pushing it through, making sure it spreads. Now, if I were not sitting down and doing this for a video, I might be, um, rather than moving the apron around, I might be working around my, my space, but you do it however you feel comfortable. This doesn't have to sit on here for a while. This doesn't have to, you know, while I'm spreading it, I can spread it and immediately remove my stencil. There, looks pretty covered. So you can get a better idea, I'm just gonna hold it up. You can see that I pushed it through and now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stencil and we'll be left with the pattern. Now immediately you want to put your stencil into a water bath. If the ink dries on the stencil, it may clog the pores of the mesh, which ruins it. Um, so we want to put it into a little bath and I've got one waiting right next to me. So I'm going to put that in agitated a little actually even take my toothbrush I have a drop of Dawn liquid in here I don't want any harsh cleaners and I've got my toothbrush to gently try and remove all of the ink from the mesh now it doesn't matter if it gets on um, the stencil part if it darkens a little that is not going to be an issue for you using the stencil over and over again. Just make sure that you've gently cleaned that mesh. I'm actually going to pull it out and pat it dry a little bit. Now what you want to do is let your stencil dry sticky side up. Um, usually I use a cotton towel and just pat at it gently. If you use a paper towel, sometimes the fibers stick and you don't want to have a sticky or a, once again, a clogged area on your stencil so that it won't stick. I'm going to let that dry face up and as soon as it takes the time to dry, it is going to be perfect to reuse again. I will be using this Fox stencil again right now. Take a look at this. Look at the lovely detail in here. He's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and, and have him dry. And um, it, I'm gonna let him sit for at least four hours. And then I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my iron or I've actually got a, um, a press that I'll heat to about 284 
and press for about one minute and that will permanently set my little fox. So super happy about this fox. Um, you'll, I'll post a picture of this on my Facebook page and you can see how he's turned out.